I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Monday, March the 11th, brought to you in part by Macrosen. Proven efficacy at an affordable upfront price is what you need in your generic Draxon. End of story. For more information, go to macrosen.com. Also, Joplin Regional Stockyards expecting around 7,500 for the regular feeder cattle auction here on Monday. Uh, they've got several things going on uh, in an effort to help uh, the victims of the fires in the Texas Panhandle. Uh, they're selling t-shirts and, and all the proceeds are going uh, to go back to, the, uh, to, the, to the, those that are affected by the fire. Uh, so you can go on to JoplinStockyards.com. Uh, they've got t-shirts and cups and things like that. And like I said, that's to raise money for the fire victims. And then they're going to be having a rollover sale, and they're expecting this to be a big deal. Uh, we've seen several sale barns have rollover sales, and I tell you what, who helps their community and their fellow uh, cattlemen and ranchers out more uh, than the auction markets? Nobody. But uh, St. Ange Livestock up in St. Ange, South Dakota, my buddy Justin Tupper, they had a rollover sale on Friday, raised over $20,000. I know they had a rollover uh, last Wednesday in Dodge City, uh, winter livestock, uh, but, uh, but quite a bit of stirring uh, going on about this rollover sale that they're going to be having at Joplin. And, uh, and you can view that sale, like always, on dvauction.com. You can also bid on the rollover steer uh, if you'd like to on dvauction.com. I haven't heard anybody say exactly what time they're going to do that. If I was guessing, it would be around 11 o'clock. They kind of consider that the high time. And if they're going to feature things, a lot of times they'll do that at 11. But uh, just get on to Joplin uh, Sale Barn, uh, Joplin Regional Stockyards on dvauction.com and be watching that sale on Monday morning. Uh, and I'm sure they'll have more information about when you can have an opportunity to participate in the rollover sale. PNS with teeth. Uh, boy, that, that's hard to imagine, uh, but uh, the, the Packers and Stockyards, I guess, are being emboldened, and we talked a little bit about this last week as we saw NCBA come out against them uh, getting any tougher, but uh, the Biden administration had told us uh, from the get-go that they were going to start uh, working on this kind of thing. And Packers and Stockyards Act from back in 1921, I think, uh, that, was, that was quite a, a, an act that was passed and it was very, very good when we were in the stockyards. The old terminal markets, your P&S agents, they run a pretty tight ship then and they used to enforce the rules and they would look for un unfair trade activity or, and, and they would look for collusion and they would look for things like that. Uh, but uh, along about the 1960s, whenever we saw your commercial feed yards kind of take over and we saw your trade move away, start to move away, and then just continue to do that up until the 80s and the 90s when most of your terminal stockyard markets kind of petered out. Uh, but whenever your, your fed cattle trade went to mostly direct basis with your commercial feedlots, uh, the Packers and Stockyards Administration did not follow that, that trade out and they quit enforcing it all together and now it, they're trying to come back in and start enforcing uh, a little bit of the of the laws that are included in the PNS Act and a lot of those laws have kind of uh, you know they've just uh, been outgrown you know we, we don't do business like we did back in the old stockyards anymore but there's some parts of it that they're wanting to uh, embolden a little bit. And uh, they're, they're, this is be the second of four expected rulemaking changes that have to do with the PNS Act, trying to give it more teeth. Uh, looking for uh, inclusive competition and market integrity. Well, we haven't had that for quite a while in our direct fed cattle market. Any market integrity uh, or inclusive competition uh, competition is one of those words uh, that just drives your Packers uh, insane. It's like fingernails on the chalkboard. They do not want to participate in competition. Uh, they wouldn't have worked so hard to build this 
oligarchy if they wanted to, to have to uh, use competition uh, in, the, in their trades. But uh, you just you barely see them ever competing against one another. We have seen it just a little bit uh, uh, on your uh, FedCal Exchange, your online uh, bidding platform there. We've seen just a little bit of that. But, uh, you know, basically your packers uh, don't even like the few guys that sell the cattle in a negotiated manner. They don't like them shopping their cattle. Uh, their, you know, their own cattle. They don't like them shopping them. You know, try calling around trying to get better bids and you're like, well, I thought that's what it was all about. Uh, it used to be what it was all about whenever we had, uh, you know, more negotiated trade. But now, of course, uh, your big four packers in the, in the country, buyers that work for them, they're all talking all the time. And if they, they find some guy that's got some cattle for sale over here and he's not in a sweetheart deal and he's got some cattle that he wants to sell on the open market and he starts calling different packers and, and basically shopping the cattle, they don't like that. They'll blackball the guy. They'll just all get together and let him sit on the cattle. That's what's recently happened to some friends of mine uh, that had an independent feed yard in Hereford, Texas and they ended up having to shut it down because they just couldn't get rid of their fat cattle anymore. And you're like, well, if they can't, if they can't, you know, ask and see who would give the most money, what kind of what kind of trade is that? Well, it's not much trade, and it, it's it's absolutely not. There's just not enough people participating in it. And then we get, uh, you know, the lion's share of the trade on some type of a formula basis based off that little bit of cash trade. It's the tail wagging the dog. Doesn't make any sense. It's not fair. Your Packers love it. Uh, but this new rulemaking here on, on the PNS Act, it's basically just going to make it easier for those that have been uh, kind of rubbed raw by your Packers to, to sue them. And that's why the National Corporate Beef Association was against it uh, because they were told to uh, by, the, by their Packer members and their big corporate feeders uh, that are all in bed with them together. Uh, they, they didn't want to do that. But uh, there's several things that this uh, new rule is supposed to do. Reinvigorate effective antitrust enforcement. Uh, I'd like to see that and I'm going to have to see it happen before I'm going to believe that they're really going to enforce any of this stuff. But there's four main points of this rule. It is to, uh, the first one is prohibit discrimination. Well, that ought to be a given. You, you know, you're not legally supposed to be able to uh, discriminate against anybody for uh, anything uh, that's, that's uh, you know, uh, race, sex, color, creed, all that kind of thing. But uh, they had to point that out in there and why they always have to point that stuff out whenever it's not even right to begin with. Uh, but the second prohibit Packer retaliation. Whoa, there's something interesting. You think Packer retaliation is, is uh, that's not a real thing. Uh, yes, it happens all day, every day, guys. And if uh, if if you tried try too hard uh, to get a higher price for your cattle, or you shop them too much, uh, or you get you uh, you just you try to to stand your ground with the Packers, they'll just let you sit on the cattle. And then the other Packers won't come in and bid on the cattle either because they're all working together. So Packer or retaliation is uh, alive and well. <clears throat> Has a lot to do with social media. Uh, if you're one of these guys that's trying to sell some fat cattle and, and you pop off on uh, Twitter or X they call it now or Facebook or, or, or even a Snapchat or something like that, uh, they're going to... Uh, get a hold of you and have you take that down immediately. They, they do that. I've, I've heard them do it many, many, many times and I've only heard a few of the times they've, they've asked people to do that. But uh, um, if, and if you don't do what they say, what are they going to do? They're going to let you sit on the cattle. Those cattle, when they're ready, they've got a shelf life, guys. Uh, the third uh, main point on there, it prohibits false or misleading statements or omissions of statements uh, in, in uh, deciding the contracts. So uh, they'd, be, uh, they'd be guilty of that quite a bit. 
Uh, they know they're guilty of these things or they wouldn't put them in this rule. Now, whether or not they're going to hold them accountable, I don't know. And, you know, fine them 500 bucks if they screw somebody out of 500,000. Uh, that's typical government there. Uh, but the fourth point on there, USDA can monitor, evaluate, and, and enforce compliance of these rules and the other rules of PNS. Uh, and they might even require record keeping uh, by the Packers on these things. So, like I said, it's going to be easier uh, for those that feel like they've been wronged by your big four Packers. And I guess it could be a, a regional Packer too, but uh, it'll make it easier for them to sue. And uh, I don't know if we'll see a lot of frivolous lawsuits. Uh, those Packers have uh, a lot better lawyers than most cattle feeders can afford to get. But uh, it's kind of interesting that they are uh, doing something with the old PNS uh, Act there. And like I said, uh, uh, trying to get your PNS agents to do something uh, besides harass uh, licensed and bonded order buyers to raise or lower their bond or something like that. Uh, you know, that that's going to be uh, the biggest uh, struggle right there. Let's talk about your board for last week. Your live cattle pits, April live cattle. Monday was down 177, Tuesday was up 132, Wednesday was down 75, Thursday was up 147. You're seeing like a little volley there, up and down, up and down. Friday was down a buck 12, and your April live cattle ended the week at 187.60. June ended the week at 183.42. March feeder cattle, Monday was down 142, Tuesday was up 75, Wednesday was down 127. Thursday was actually unchanged, and then Friday down 182, uh, with March feeder cattle ending the week at 249.20. Sure didn't hurt uh, your cash auction sales late in the week or over the weekend, so I guess they weren't too worried about it. April feeder cattle contracts ended the week at 254.10. March corn ended the week at 426 and a quarter. March beans 1170 and a half, and May Kansas City hard red winter wheat at 588 and three fourths. Uh, your fat cattle sales up through Thursday. They had sold 38,700 head in your five area feeding region. And uh, that, that's uh, pretty light. And then we didn't have a whole lot of trade on Friday. So uh, it was a higher market, sharply higher in some places. Packers uh, were limited the number of cattle that they were buying. And we are hearing now uh, that your Packers Pretty much all of your big four plants are now going to be uh, down to 32 hours. Whether they eliminate the Friday kill, which oh, nobody's doing anything on Saturday anymore, whether they eliminate the Friday kill or just trim an hour uh, or so off of every other day that they work, uh, they're all cutting back to 32 hours. So they're not. They're going to. They're going to cut this kill down to nearly nothing. Uh, we've been hearing that our beef imports have risen. Uh, we're going to see how much they've risen here. Uh, i got to find that out here early this, uh, this week and tell you about it when I find out. But uh, they got to get the product somewhere. But we're getting close to grilling season. we got a uh, early spring, and you would think that they would be getting, uh, you know, ramped up for that and getting braced uh, for people dusting off their grills and, and running to the store and getting something to throw on there. But uh, when you're cutting your kills this much, uh, it's going to be hard for them to do, but fat cattle trade up through Thursday. Live sales of fat steers and heifers in the five area, 182 to 187. That was two bucks higher. Their weighted average up through Thursday was 185.15. That was a dollar 84 higher than the end of the previous week's weighted average. Dress sales 290 to three dollars. Yes, 300 dollars dressed. And I actually had a feeder flash gang member uh, send me the information on that, but it was it was reported by USDA. So we have seen three hundred dollar dress sales now, guys. That was two to five bucks higher. Uh, weighted average dress was two ninety three twenty two. Uh, weighted average there uh, was up uh, two eighty two compared to the end of last week's weighted average. Friday sales were fairly limited. 1800 in Iowa, uh, a little over 24,000 for the week, 185 to 187 live, and 292 dressed on Friday. Nebraska, 600 head on Friday, 15 and a half thousand for the week, live sales 185 to 186, and dress sales 290 on Friday. K 
Kansas 5300 on Friday, only 6600 for the week. They sold like twice that many last uh, the previous week. Uh, but live sales on Friday were 184 to mostly 185. On Thursday, uh, your live sales in the Southern Plains were mostly 186. So we did see them uh, pull the range back there on the very late sales on Friday. But uh, Texas only 2100, or actually 2100 on Friday, and only 2300 for the whole week. <laughs> you know, there's not many people uh, that, that trade fat cattle on a negotiated basis in Texas. It's all corporate feeders, and they all sell on some kind of a sweetheart deal. But on Friday, we saw 185 paid in Texas. On Thursday, we had seen a little bit of 186. So two to three dollars higher in the Southern Plains. Uh, and that two dollars was late. Three dollars was on Thursday. Uh, Northern Plains was two to three higher live, two to four higher dressed. Box beef cutout values were higher, quite a bit higher for last week. Your weighted average on all of last week's choice cuts was up 272 compared to the previous week's weighted average at 305.93. And your late Friday afternoon sales were a little more than a dollar higher than that weighted average for the week. So, you know, big gains on your box beef cutouts. Uh, selects, your weighted average on all of last week's trade and select cuts up 352 from the previous week's weighted average at 295.77. And your late Friday um, select was about a dollar and a half higher than that weighted average. So we're seeing gains in the price that the Packers are getting for their product, uh, but they, have, uh, they, they continue to pinch off uh, the amount of cattle that they slaughter. Like I said, they can control the supply on both ends uh, of the spectrum, guys, and it would be nice to be able to operate like that. Uh, all that box beef information based on 499 loads of cuts, grinds, and trimmings. Your slaughter uh, was disappointing. 583,000. You know, a normal kill week would be 630 to 635, and we saw 583,000 last week. 599 the previous week, so down 16 from the previous week, down 48 from the same week a year ago. Talk about what else is going on. Fair piece is that revolutionary product that is scientifically proven, guys. Uh, you just put it on the calf's uh, muzzle and on their pole. Uh, it calms them down, gives them a sensation uh, of being, uh, you know, uh, on their mother, and it ta it calms them down, guys. And uh, at only three bucks a dose, I don't know how you can afford not to do it or at least try it. Uh, if you go on to fairpeace.com, you can see a lot of testimonials and a lot of uh, uh, information on there. My favorite is they ran a test uh, where they bought uh, high-risk calves out of Mississippi sale barns, hauled them to College Station, Texas, where Fair Peace is based. Uh, they ran them through the regular rigmarole of, of getting con uh, preconditioned, uh, and, then they, and then they loaded them up and hauled them to the Texas Panhandle, turned around and hauled them back, so even more stress, and, uh, and they treated them all the same, except for half of them they gave fair piece to, and half of them they didn't. The ones they didn't give fair piece to, they had it over a 17% death loss, and the ones they did give fair piece to had a less than 3% death loss. Uh, that, that looks like a pretty uh, pretty glaring uh, uh, test right there, guys. So check it out at fairpeace.com. Talk about your feeder cattle markets, real-time index on DV auction. Ended the week at 249.26. That was up 96 cents compared to the end of the previous week. Uh, your latest CME cash feeder cattle index was 248.74. Uh, your, your trends in your sales last week, uh, we're mostly four to eight dollars higher, uh, but the biggest part of the gains was on your middleweight cattle, especially your six weight cattle. And six weight cattle running all the way up to 700 pounds. That's what people really wanted the most. Uh, they wanted some six weights to go with the lighter grazing cattle that they bought earlier in the year. Uh, some people want six weights to turn out on some uh, some graze out wheat that they have uh, where they can make the most out of that. Uh, still graze, uh, still buying grazing cattle. Some people buying lighter weight feeding cattle because uh, the feed's cheap and the cattle are high, so they need as much time as they can and make the calves or cattle as big as they can 
uh, to try to work themselves into something that makes money. Uh, but you look at uh, at your national beef wire stick out sale of the, of the day, and that's for late last week or over the weekend. And it was winter livestock auction in winter South Dakota. That over 3,000 head there. Look at your best test weights. 1,025 head of those six weights I was just talking about. Average 653 with a weighted average price on over a thousand of them of 305.53. My goodness, how about 409 head of eight weight steers in winter South Dakota? The average 832, uh, weighted average price 253.01. Uh, about the heifers, 324 head of five weight heifers, average 548 at 291.42, and 538 head of six weight heifers, average 643 at 270. Give you some individual quotes from around. How about Wahoo Livestock Sales in Wahoo, Nebraska? Uh, now this set of cattle right here, I got a little bit of information on them. Uh, I was a local producer and he said the, the mothers of these calves, the cows that had these calves I'm fixing to tell you about, come off that famous McNutt Ranch over Tryon, Nebraska that a lot of times post, is, uh, post some really big prices there. But these would be F1 uh, cattle there, black baldies, 80 steers weighed 708 in Wahoo, Nebraska at 282. Uh, how about Erickson, Nebraska? Erickson Livestock Market there on Saturday, they sold a load of steers weighed 822 at 264.50. But the most impressive quote that I saw anywhere late last week or over the weekend, your Macris and No BS top quote for the day, come out of Fort Pier Livestock Auction. Fort Pierce, South Dakota, was 85 steers, weighed 641 at 334. And that's your feeder flash for Monday.